This is another video from section 7.6, which has to do some, some mass and moments. So for this particular systems, it's called um, the moments and center of mass of a planar lamnia. A planar lamnia is a thin, flat plate of material of constant density rho, that P looking symbol. Let f and g be continuous functions such that f of x is greater than or equal to g of x on an interval a, b, and consider the planar lamnia of uniform constant density rho bounded by the graphs of f of x and g of x in this interval at a to b. One, the moment about the x and y axes are the moment about the x axes is rho the integral from a to b f plus g over 2 times f minus g. The moment about the y-axis is rho times the integral from a to b of x times x f minus g. And then the center of mass can be found by doing um, the moment of y over the total mass, moment of x over the total um, mass, and the total mass can be calculated by finding the rho times the integral of f minus g dx, okay? So here we have um, an example, the only example we have of this particular kind. So it says, find the center of mass x bar y bar for the lamnia of uniform density rho bounded by the graphs of y equals square root of x plus 2 and y equals 1 over 5x plus 2. Okay, so in order for us to figure out the bounds, we need to know where these two functions are equivalent to each other. So we will set them equal to each other. If I minus 2 on both sides, I get the square root of x equals x over 5. If I square both sides, I will get x equals x squared over 25. If I multiply both sides by 25, I get 25x equal to x squared. If I get all my terms to the right hand side, I get x squared minus 25x. If I factor that, I have x minus 25. And then if I set each of those equal to 0, I get the two values x equals to 0 and x equals to 25. Which means if I draw the region and put 25 here, you can pick something in the middle like, um, well, of course, zero, because that's one of the bounds. And then maybe, say, four, okay? Four will probably be a lot closer to over here, but just something. And then maybe 16, which would be a little bit closer over here. Okay, so zero, that's going to give me two. I'm gonna go by two. I'm not sure. Oops, two, four, six, eight, ten. I don't think I have to go that high, but we'll see. So when I plug in zero into each of these, I'm going to get two. When I plug in 25 into either one of these, I'm going to get seven. Now if I plug in four in here, two plus two is four. And if I plug 16 in here, I get 4 plus 2, which is 6. And this is a curve, so it goes like this in that direction. And then if I plug in 4 here, I get 2.8, which is here somewhere. If I plug in 16, I get 5.2, which is somewhere in here and this is a straight line it should be a straight line so it should be going straight I know I'm a horrible drawer and I'm not drawing on graph paper so it doesn't look exactly straight but you can tell that the line is down here and the square root function is on top and that's what I needed to know from that information is just to know which one is f and which one is g. So this one is going to be f and this function is going to be g, okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead and set everything up. So first thing I'm gonna need for both of those um, positions in the center of mass is my total mass. So let's go figure out what that is. And since I know my bounds, my bound 
should be 0 to 25. And then I should be doing um, just f minus g. So I will be doing the square root of x plus 2 minus 1 fifth x plus 2. And if I simplify that, I will end up with x to the 1 half minus 1 fifth x dx. Now if I integrate that, I end up with x to the 3 halves times 2 thirds minus 1 fifth x squared over 2, which makes this a 10. And then from 0 to 25, I shall evaluate it. So we get 2 thirds times square root of 25 is 5 to the third is 125 minus 25 over 10, which can be simplified 25 over 10 can be simplified into 5 over 2. And then minus, when I plug in 0, I'm just going to get two zeros. So we get the row is, let's see, 125 is 250 divided by 3 minus 5 halves. And then put that in a fraction. I get... Hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. It's 25 squared, which is not 25. 25 squared is 625, and you cannot, re well, you can reduce that with 10. You will get 125 over 2. So I have 250 over 3 minus 125 over 2, and I get the fraction 125 over 6 times rho, which is just 125 rho over 6. So that's what we have for m. Um, I'm just going to circle this, it's not my final answer, but I will use it later to find the final answer. Now I need to find mx, and that formula is 0 to 25, and then I'm going to take f plus g, so square root of x plus 2 plus 1 over 5x plus 2 over 2 times f minus g. And after I minus them, I got that. So I'm just going to use the simplified version. There's no need in repeating what I've already done. So then here I get... Um, these two will make a 4. So I'm going to end up with... Um, x to the 1 half over 2 plus x over 10 plus 4 over 2, which is just 2. So let me distribute that. Oops. So that will be x over 2 minus x to the 3 halves over and plus x to the 3 halves over 10 minus x over or x squared over 50 plus 2x to the 1 half and minus 2x over 5. So these two will reduce and so then let's see what we end up with. Oh, I don't know why I put a 5 there, it should be a 2.
Let me make sure I did that right. So this times this is x over 2. This times this. is x to the 3 halves over 10, this times this, yep, this times this, yep, this times this, and this times this. Okay. So we get rho. Now, these are both x, so let's see. What is 1 half minus 2 over 5? I get x over 10 minus x squared over 50 plus 2x to the 1 half. So I think we can integrate now. I get x squared over 20 minus x cubed over 150 plus 2x to the 3 halves times 2 thirds evaluated from 0 to 25. So really this is going to be 4 thirds. So if I plug in 25 I'm going to get um, 625 over 20 minus 25 to the third power. This huge number over 150 plus the square root of 25 is 5 cubed is 125 and times 4 is 500 over 3 minus when I plug in 0 I'm just going to get a bunch of zeros so let's see what we get here 625 divided by 20 minus 15625 over 150 plus 500 over 3 um, and we get 375 row over 4 and so that's for MX again I'm not gonna box it I'm just gonna circle it because we will use it later now we do MY so that's going to be from 0 to 25 and it's gonna be X times the difference of the two functions, which I've already simplified there. So if I distribute that x, I'm going to get x to the 3 halves minus x squared over 5. And if I integrate that, I'm going to get x to the 5 halves times 2 fifths minus x cubed over 15 from 0 to 25. So if I plug these in, I will get square root of 25 is 5, 5 raised to the 5 times 2 is going to be 6250 over 5 minus 25 raised to the 3rd, 15625 over 15. Let's see what that is. Now remember, these are just locations, so if you happen to get a negative, it doesn't mean that it's wrong. It just means that that's going to be the location of that particular value, okay? The only one that wouldn't make sense to have a negative is the masses because weight is not negative, okay? That's the only one that should be positive, but the moment of x and the moment of y could very well end up being negatives. It just depends on your computation, okay? So x bar is going to be my over m, which means 625 over 3 rho divided by um, little m, which was 125 rho over 6. That's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal which means these will reduce, the rows will reduce, these will reduce giving me 10 so that's the x location of the center of mass 
y bar is mx over m. mx was 375 rho over 4 divided by 125 rho over 6. So multiply by the reciprocal. So the rows cancel, this reduce, these reduce, so I get 9 over 2. And so then the center of mass is going to be 10 for x and 9 over 2 for y.